from Tel Aviv melting in this summer heat. Anyhow, we are super excited to announce that this is our online live stream lunch party. So this means that if you are watching this live, do go and fix yourself a nice cup of tea. Or grab a drink from the fridge, the dance, wherever you guys are at. Because for the next two hours, we are here to explain to you how all the things are going. Please feel free to ask us anything in the comments. Team pairing to upcoming workshops. Oh my god, I can already see some new users. Okay, well let's do this. Alright, let's find out what we're looking for. What, 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 what? Hello everybody, uh, I'm Carmel. And I'm Gabby, if that wasn't clear from the video. And uh, what you just saw in the video was uh, the moment uh, we went public, so to speak. Uh, just to explain uh, what Carmel here means by we, well, we are desperately seeking. Probably some of you already saw us uh, earlier during the festival at the Schmampus. I also uh, see some uh, seekers in the crowd and uh, people I talked and met during the workshops we gave yesterday and today. And probably as you can tell, uh, we are all reading from scripted texts. So you can assume or that we hoped that what we just read out loud and will be reading out loud is actually true. Uh, to those of you who don't know what we do, um, we are an online community. Essentially, we start as a grassroots duo and uh, then turned collective. Since then, Desperately Seeking has spread out through various anarcho-tech, digi-health communities and project houses practically worldwide. Uh, we're mainly focused on the theme of online search, but in a much more spiritual sense of the word. Uh, but maybe the best way um, to explain what drove us here in the first place is to tell you guys the story of how me and Gabi here met. Yeah, you really like that story, like you mentioned it also in the first workshop. Yes, we both swiped right on Tinder. Um, back then I was uh, in an exchange student uh, program here at uh, the UDK and um, um, well, yeah, uh, things didn't exactly go uh, in that particular direction. Uh, we mainly became uh, video uh, buddies, um, but um, well, um, it's actually pretty exciting for us to give this talk here at Transmediale because Desperately Seeking all started when Carmel and I met in Berlin, like Carmel said. She was at the UDK uh, and it was right after Transmediale 2016. Um, and after the whole Tinder thing went in that particular... Well, I think we actually never met for face-to-face uh, -face for a very long time. Um, Gabi was more of a hermit type. He was constantly writing his thesis or complaining that it's too cold to go outside. I was mainly trying to find a way to balance off our platonic friendship with another romantic one I had at the time. So I stuck to video to not make things too awkward. Well, definitely not too awkward. Oh, it made things even more awkward, obviously, especially when my girlfriend realized I was on Tinder. She didn't buy my excuse that it was for research purposes. Next slide. Yes, research. You study digital yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. need to do some research and, and... And write your thesis. And yes, that's how it more or less works. Well, uh, unlike you, Gabby, I would uh, actually go out quite a lot, so uh -huh. not to fall into depression or self-medicate like my flatmate. And um, a certain I make emerge, like me wandering about and Gabby escorting me online, we just ended up talking nonstop. While Carmel was living the lavish life, uh, she would report to me. 
uh, live with her thoughts, what she's up to, etc. Uh, it was like private stories which I would make only for you and um, well I think <laughs> um, like you, you always teased me and asked me what is that thing you find inside this screen. Uh, I was a bit of a cocky prick. <laughs> well, you love mansplaining and you love cutting in. I love cutting in. So much that we had to turn it into a thing or simply I allowed it to turn into a thing. It was like Gabi was sort of a proxy interpreter of my experiences as they were taking place. But the most interesting thing that I did was to answer back in links. Um, what I mean by that uh, is I would link anything uh, that came to my mind regarding what I saw through Carmel's phone. In practice, this created a sort of flux that served us incredibly well, being very different yet altogether lonesome individuals. Even if it didn't seem like that at first. I remember being eager for a semi-physical experience of Carmel's world and particularly her millennial, cooler, flashy lifestyle that I felt barred from in my mid-30s. And on the other hand, I needed someone to fill in my party goer experience which felt altogether quite purposeless. Yes, you indeed needed someone to explain your own world to you, and I love mansplaining. Um, we would talk about it and call Gabi my free associative human search engine. Uh, we'd even schedule sessions to hit the clubs together. Um, and just like I would go out somewhere and just live stream things to him. And in return, I would send you trivia information about the location, the song in the background, or just random stuff that I found relevant. And then, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, and then suddenly we realized we had basically come up with a new analog immersive search experience, one that search engines like Google simply aren't able to offer anymore. This might sound a bit basic at first, but if you think about it, mm, although Googling is said to be personalized, it's a very cold and impersonal experience. For people who are not avid online shoppers, I would even say that there's something almost paralyzing about the Google landing page. It's not too fun to talk to a computer. On the one hand, it knows you better than you know yourself. On the other hand, it doesn't ask your permission for this knowledge and it doesn't seem to be friendlier to me just because it knows me. For the most part, the fact that Google probably knows my menstrual cycle better than I do doesn't mean to want to direct me to the same top-ranked results. It would probably push you the same brands of reusable, period-proof undies. Well, it knows me so well. <laughs> it definitely knows you very, very, very well. So instead, uh, what we did was to try and find and revert back this targeted, dry convention of searching to the more passionate, livelier concept of seeking. And it uh, actually didn't take too long for uh, an actual community uh, to uh, like form around this concept of free associative search engine sessions. Because when we pitched this idea um, with these buzzwords, friends started pushing us to actually make something a bit more robust. So we took this concept and turned it into, of course, phases which comprises what Komel just uh, said. Um, yep. um, a session will go as follows. We'd announce a date. And time. And split up into pairs. One partner would go at somewhere. And the other partner would escort by proxy. And serve as human Google. Sometimes vice versa and parallel. They both could go anywhere. They could be anywhere. The important thing that one 
uh, uh, was um, functioned as the eyes on the ground. Whereas the other functioned as an agent randomly tapping into the online hive mind. And what was amazing to see was how people literally rediscover themselves in their own neighborhoods, favorite spots. Everything gained new value and meaning through this new form of mutual seeking. For posterity. And for promotion, admittedly. We collected the testimonials by our most desperate seekers. And uh, here are a few. I am a love and um, I came across desperately sick community during the uh, low tech connection hackathon in Tel Aviv and since then I think you can call me a member of the community. Uh, what I love most about our community, especially the paired sessions, is the insane stuff you get to find out when you allow somebody else to explore your own neighborhood through their eyes. Suddenly nothing is trivial and everything is super interesting and new. I met um, Carmel and Gabby in time of my life when like you two said I still didn't find what I'm looking for. The community helped me by uh, changing or redefining the search habits that I uh, had been using. For instance, we had this session a couple of weeks ago when I was at this burger place in Neukölln, BBI, Berlin Burger International. And my online partner sent me this link. And it turns out that uh, this place was serving burgers back to the Cold War. But only back then, they were also using the place secretly as a Stasi headquarters in West Berlin. I mean, how random is that? Like, they would code messages by rearranging the sesame seeds on the buns and crazy things like that. And yes, you guessed it right, the customers would complain about the service back then as well. Hi, girls, there. Okay, uh, so uh, before we move uh, on to the next bit, uh, maybe we could recap. Uh, so if you recall the video which we showed at the beginning of the session, uh, that was the moment when we uh, celebrated our European launch. And, and Israeli. And the Israeli, that was the second event, but the first one was the European launch, which led to the Israeli launch. Now you're cutting in, just saying. Um, so, so far desperately seeking, uh, wasn't a platform, at least not in the sense of Airbnb or Facebook. It was more of a curated network that uh, offered a buffet of activities like workshops, symposiums. And most importantly, the pairing sessions which we helped facilitate. But now it was sort of growing into a second phase. Beyond the natural growth of community, we're constantly asking ourselves, could we offer this practice of associative exploration or human or humane search engine to single seekers or users? We wanted something that people could simply do alone, just with their phones. Instead of the dreaded Google splash page, they would experience a form of searching that was more fun, creative, even Intimate. Like Google on Acid, like Molly, like Google on Molly, meditation. Yes, of course, and priceless. And for this, uh, we decided to endorse the, sm the Schmoogle search engine. Um, Those of you who have sat with us or simply laundered the Schmoogle Schmampools already know it. Um, the name is quite telling. Um, but, uh, it is really an amazing app or service. It is not actually an app. You could just reach it by writing on your browser schmogel.world. Um, and at least we think that it's a brilliant and subversive and funny venture. Yeah, 
it, just a nice way. Um, anyhow, we, we, we won't do a good job in explaining that bit, uh, so we would like to uh, give the word to Tzila Hassin, the founder and CEO of Shmugel. Hi. Um, hi, I'm Tzila. Uh, thank you, Carmel and Gabi, for invitation and collaboration. I'm very joyful. Okay, um, I'm afraid my style isn't as funny as uh, the millennials. Um, I'm the CEO, after all. Um, okay, um, so I'm, um, besides being an artist, I'm also an engineer, and um, recently I have become an entrepreneur. Carmel and Gabi already explained how desperately seeking relates to Berlin, but in the case of Schmuggel, the connection goes even deeper and is rooted in Berlin's recent history. Um, two years ago, I guess you're all familiar, or most of you are familiar with this campaign, Transmediale was part of the fuck off Google protest against Google's attempt to build its shiny new campus in the heart of Kreuzberg. The local community put up an amazing fight and succeeded in keeping Google out of Kreuzberg. Then, of course, Google found another location in Berlin. Obviously, there was no way Google would stay out of Berlin. And it is um, fast transforming from culture capital to some version of, of Silicon Valley. But real estate is only the minor problem here. The more profound problem is that Google is taking over not only our real estate, our very thoughts, our knowledge building processes, our imagination, and this is what we need to fight, and we need to fight this with every search. And this is one way we propose of doing it. So yeah, Schmuggle. Schmuggle is a non-hierarchical search engine. Some of you have already come across the Schmuggle Schmampus lounge down there. And what do we talk about when we say non-hierarchical or rank-free? It means that Schmuggel is a search engine where the results are displayed in random order. How does it work? Regularly, you type a query, any query, automatically results you get which would otherwise appear in page 6, 4, or even 10 in any other engine. Refresh and you get a new ordering, discovering more results you probably haven't seen before. As simple as this hack may seem, it is not. It's actually pretty fundamental. And why is it fundamental? Because not all search results were created equal. Why were they not created equal? Because of ranking or, of course, Google ranking. So I guess most of you here are probably familiar with Plato, Plato's Allegory of the Cave. And briefly, it's a story about a group of prisoners living inside a cave in such conditions that the only reality, the only world they are aware of is the shadow play on the wall. They are unaware and therefore cannot even imagine other possibilities. What's more, they are not even aware that this shadow play is completely controlled, fabricated. The prisoners have complete faith in this meager display and therefore do not, cannot question its authority. 2,000 years later, what does the cave look like? Yep. It's the same cave, only now it's digitized, algorithmified. But basically, we're still looking at a wall, displaying some answers, fabricated by some obscure mechanism, whose answers we take to be the only truth, since we are unable to imagine, unsure of the possibility, of the viability of any other alternatives. This, of course, doesn't happen by itself. Those mechanisms, those algorithms, have optimized the supply of instantly gratifying answers, programming us to believe that these are the best, the only answers we should be looking for. How do they claim to know that these are the best results? Quantification. Quantification of everything. Just to, grasp, to get a grasp of how huge, how important is the business of searching and finding, Every year, there are 2.2 trillion searches made. Now, the going myth is that Google understands us, as its users, so well that it provides us results that are specifically ta tailored to our needs. This is, one, problematic, even dangerous. Two, simply not true. Same demographics get same answers. Is Google interested in diversity? Is it interested in choice? Apparently not. 
Are we looking for choice? Normally we should. Do we look further? Mostly not. And this is where the real problems start surfacing. surfacing. We end up being satisfied by pretty much the same few answers like another million users because we are being conditioned to ask pretty much the same questions. And this is where you might ask, nah, can't be. Are we really starting to ask the same things? Let's look at the Google trends of the last couple of years. All we when you think of it, just the term trends, you already realize we are asking the same questions. It seems we are mainly Googling for instant life hacks. How to become a good dancer, how to become a good cook, how to study and become a good student. In short, how to be the best versions of ourselves. It's become this, you know, magic potion thing. Want to become richer, prettier, brighter? Google will provide you with an instant answer to a better you. Or to put it bluntly, use Google to unlock the secret to a successful you. Google has reduced our curiosity and imagination to targeted, quantified and ranked self-centered solutionism. This might work fine for some of us, some of the time. Does it work for all of us, all of the time? In the era of post-internet and post-truth, we sometimes wonder, does an escape route actually exist at all? Do we really have to settle for the Google Archie's reductive, opaque, solutionist approach to being in the world? And if not, does it all boil down to connect or disconnect from the web? Is it Google or nothing? Well, no. We don't, and we certainly shouldn't, live in a binary world. Hakim Bey already argued in the 90s that to imagine a world beyond capitalism means coming up with tactics for alternatives within the cracks of capitalism. Now, in 2020, we must come up with ways to live online alongside Google. Decolonizing, feminizing the all-encompassing Google archive must happen within it, underneath it, and through it. And that's why we came up with Shmuel. We at Shmuel are building a non-hegemonic, non-hierarchical search platform. Every Shmuel search sheds light on what the Google cave hides. Here's how it looks like in action. On the left side, you see repeated Schmuggle searches. On the right side, well, you get it. The real beauty here is that Schmuggle isn't just a Trojan horse or a finger in the uh, eye of the tech industry. It has a market. It answers a real need. In fact, we are its primary audience. It's us, it's you, it's artists, scholars, cultural entrepreneurs, independent thinkers, anyone looking for a crack in the cave. Berlin has always been a mecca for minds and souls looking for a life less ordinary. Maybe that's why Google wants to colonize it so badly. Berlin still serves as Europe's counterculture counter hub, its rebel soul, just like San Francisco was to the US before big tech took over. Gentrify the beating heart of Berlin and the rest will follow. But Berlin's rebel souls fight the hardest. Um, uh, in a minute, we'll have time for them. Um, um, uh, QA yeah. So here is a sticker from the many ones we've been spreading around Kreuzberg in this past week, part of our campaign to win over the heart of the district. We, as, um, just a moment, we'll get there, I, I promise. Um, it's my last page. We will have a Q&A round soon enough, so please just wait with... Responses. Thank uh, you. I think we, as Schmuggle and as desperately seeking, are calling to arms, actually, to smash the Google Archie, to join us in our activities, help spread the word, help sh spread the use of Schmuggle as a viable. Uh Hi, goes there. Hi. That's uh, you, right? We missed you at the workshop that you were thing? supposed to facilitate. It's so nice of you to join us. You want to say something? And, and this, this, this cannot wait for the Q&A. Because Tzila is not yet finished. Okay, I mean, yeah, I have a couple of more lines, but maybe if it's so uh, burning, the uh, sure somebody may give her the mic. Really? Um, no. 
You want to stand up, maybe? Okay, you, what are we missing, Gozda? Hi, everyone. Um, okay, first of all, I was here for the workshops. I came here for the workshops. But after seeing what you guys teamed up with, like huh? this, this is basically a hipster Google that you're actually promoting in Transmedia, which nice was term, one, of the, one of the venues that was behind Fuck Off Google campaign. And we are aware. this is, you are doing it in such a cynical way, like using cynical. the same lingo and same tactics. Cynical. Yes, it is very cynical. We are being cynical to the Fuck Off Google campaign. No, seriously. Look, really, I mean, I don't think, I, at least on the stage, there is no one, there is no one more attuned to the fuck off Google campaign than myself. And you claiming that what we're doing is cynical is, to me, personally insulting. Furthermore, I don't exactly understand what you mean by that. Um, but... It is, I mean, the lingo, the style. I thought that the, when I joined Desperately Seeking, I thought it was just, it was just a community. It was not it is. a social media campaign for a hipster Google. This is, this is what we're promoting. Can I, this, answer for I, I did not come to the workshops because I saw what you've done downstairs, what, like the way, and also, second of all, you haven't even asked me to use my face for this promotion. You're, you're doing it without my consent. Consent? I mean... Yeah. I, I want to answer. Uh, Gozda, first of all, um, I, I want to say that I'm glad to see you, that everything is okay, because I didn't answer like 15 texts or something. And um, this is something we talked about. This is something you did in the workshops with us. We are a community, and there are things we do, and there are things we're trying to move on forward. And we think that there are tools that are more approachable to people uh, than coming to our workshops or doing our online sessions or even like, you know, being aware of, of this thought of looking at searching as something that is more deep, more organic to, to, to your day, to your life. And uh, we think this is maybe something that can make think, people think about it, at least. If not really be something more than that, at least think about it. I mean, one thing is that you're against the idea that we're maybe uh, using something that presents itself as a product. The other is to say that product. you are not on board with this. Because I know for a fact that we actually worked on your video together. I know that you and Comet... But it, it was not for Schmoogle. It was for DS. Well, it still is for DS. This is exactly what I don't, un I think you're conflating two things. Um, we are using it in a very targeted manner. And it is serving a very particular purpose, which we as a community are trying to promote. So I do not understand exactly where you Sorry, see the problem. But what, what, what are you exactly promoting? You are talking about Google, fuck off Google campaign and how people in Berlin, like, shout away the, the campus, at least from Kreuzberg. But like what you are bringing or what you're proposing is going to do the exact same thing that, that we are afraid Google is going to do, like rising I, I, the rents, like changing the whole facade of the city. I this think you have a complete misconception of Schmuggel. Maybe Tila could please give enlighten you a me. little bit of, yeah. you know. Okay. Um, I cannot answer for the uh, desperately seeking community claims that, that you make, but I can, I, I can answer from the uh, Schmuggel part. And, um, I can assure you there's nothing cynical um, happening here. It's, uh, let's say, an honest attempt to operate in different ways. Um, I mean, in, in creating, a, um, taking something that was an artwork and turning it into a product without giving up its critical apparatus. Uh, and uh, we are, yes, we are using um, let's say the regular platforms and maybe we're also using some corporate lingo maybe but this is all in order to spread it as a, as a product as a viable alternative and if you want to call it hipster Google actually I really don't have a problem with that I think it's a yeah don't you think it's problematic that you don't see a problem with that you have to explain that to me because I'm not Seeing things in a soap. Why do you like being called hipster Google? 
Well, maybe because it's a more updated version of what a search engine can and should look like. I can it's an updated to... version of something very problematic. Yes, Google is problematic. I'm not. Uh, that's exactly what we are saying here. Look, we, we, yeah. Can I look? Okay. Sure. Sometimes, in order to, at least as an artist, that's how I see things. In order to speak truth to power, you need to, to some extent, emulate the same strategies and tactics that power uses. In a sense, if I'm understanding the reading that you give things, this is more or less what we're trying to do. But it's also pretty, I mean, we, it's you're, also pretty you're important. Me what? With, are you saying that I'm being naive in this? Yes, I think that you're being naive, and I think you also don't exactly understand what Schmuggel is. We are not this big tech monster. We are basically a um, big startup. Startup or an art up. We consider ourselves an artist run startup. We do not have massive funding. Uh, we basically only started off on our uh, route um, together, desperately seeking and Schmuggel to sort of try and promote this thing and give it some of a backbone because. We are looking for, star, uh, for funding. Uh, we, Schmugel joined an accelerator recently. And what's more, and maybe and there's a really, yeah. it's a very useful tool. So first we, t we did turn down some funding opportunity because we were not happy with the people who wanted to fund it and the conditions they have. So we prefer to keep on going being a um, um, bootstrap uh, startup. And another thing was that we were invited into some, there's so much gold rush happening in this startup uh, uh, myth uh, situation. We were invited to join, so we were selected to uh, join this pro very hyped program. And then after we were selected, we were told that we have to pay a few thousand euros, which we, of course we do not have. Um, and then I went online to check out this, uh, this prestigious program and I was pretty thorough. I went through the first Google 20 results or so. And if like, yes, this is a great program if you know how to work it and uh, of course how to be successful, successful in this program. And then I went to Schmuggel and then the real truth surfaced that it was actually some sort, not like an, an illegal scam, but it was something that would, it was so hyped that startups actually paid money to be part of it and did not get anything out of it except for this, yeah, I was in this program. Basically so, you used yeah. Schmuggel? in to order to save Schmuggel. Uh, to, to save Schmuggel. And, and that is yeah. what I meant when I said that yeah. it was a very, very useful tool. So we are not just an like art... You can, you can just go to the page 10 and find the exact same result by yourself. Yeah. Why do I actually... But are, are you gonna do, uh, but are you actually going to do that? Like, how often does that yes. happen? Did yes. you go to page 10? Uh, that's uh, but, but also, just a sec, because I see other people raising their hands. Uh, and, and please, like... Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe we can uh, open the floor actually to discuss if, if, if we're already like talking. If it's I, I don't think we have time to finish uh, um, uh, the presentation, so I think the QA is, is we can start. Please, like, uh, yeah, uh, people raising their hands. Yeah, I, th I think we took a. If you don't mind, are there any? Uh, is there anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just two already. She, she did. This is why I told you. Like, okay, sorry. Come on, stop, guys. Um, yeah, I was just wanting to ask, annoying. like, if you can then tell us more about Schmuggel, like, about then, because it's for us, it's, like, very f hard to follow up this, like, kind of heated issue, so we would, maybe you can tell us, like, how, the, how did you actually decide, why did you decide to, like, start with Schmuggel, who is then in it, so maybe it becomes more transparent and we can follow, okay. because this is a bit We'll be glad of, to. Thank okay, you. Okay, glad to. Um, thank you for the question, uh, which is also nicely addressed. Um, Schmuggel started out as an artwork in uh, 2005, it was a hack. Um, I hacked Google, in a sense, and um, maintained it online for several years until it was impossible to maintain, not, not because Google were mean to me, they never, I was completely under the radar, but um, they have this uh, DDoS um, monitoring and then it, it became practically impossible to, uh, to maintain, so I had to take it offline. Later I got some funding from a um, design festival uh, to relieve it and it was clear it could not be um, a hack anymore, a punk hack. And um, then we had to buy results. We had to um, work with our API and buy results. And then I realized that if in order to see the world the way it is, 
I have to pay money to Google in order to see the world not through Google's eyes, then something is really wrong, and this has to be discussed. This has to be brought uh, to the, to a, uh, made into a public debate. And I realized that museums and galleries and art festivals were maybe not the best place or most effective place. Um, and it has to uh, impose itself as a real product alternative. And this is where um, the decision to turn it into a startup um, um, became. Maybe I could jump in and yeah, say... Please that we also have a very clear distinction between startup and art up. Art up means artist run startup. The problem that you see, in my opinion, in Silicon Valley or generally in the way in which um, artists and designers are involved in technological products is that first come the team of technicians, scientists, uh, engineers, with some kind of idea, then they need to turn that idea into a consumerist uh, commodity, something that could be peddled to the masses. They don't know how to do that, so they take the artist, the designer, oh, you are good at making creative stuff and making things into useful things, step in. There is very, very little room for criticism, for a critical perspective when you enter the process only at the last stage. In an art up, it's the other way around. You flip it over. We believe that we ourselves as artists, I think, uh, can introduce innovative ideas which already incorporate critical perspective, beginning from there and then reaching out to the engineers, then reaching out to the tech community to realize it in a way which is also self-reflective. And we think that this opens the door to, I don't know, much better responsible use of technology. Yeah, and if you are in a, in a tech uh, meetup, I would say to disrupting the market or innovating uh, um, uh, search, search engines. Because for the last year I've been talking to uh, high-tech VCs um, and all, all kinds of yeah, startup, in all kinds of startup uh, situation. Uh, just to answer your question, who is part of it? Well, um, we're um, artists, uh, engineers, and designers, and we even have a corporate lawyer who is helping us with uh, with the legal issues. And we are currently not funded, uh, partly because of our um, of our choice, um, partly because, well, the capital world is curious, but they're still not. Uh, but they're still hesitant, but we are in, um, in an um, official accelerator program, um, and I believe that in half a year, a year, things will get really interesting from that point of view. Um, we have some, a little bit more time, so I would like to take more questions from the audience. Um, yeah, could you give her the mic? Is there someone Ooh. earlier raising their hand? Was that you? And then the girl with the... Um, um, uh, actually, yeah. it was With the pretty hair. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> yeah, it was just a comment before because um, I have seen this idea in different exercises, um, theoretical or art projects, and I think this makes the difference of bringing it to real use. I guess you will learn from the use of the people as well. Um, now I I don't know how are you planning to sustain it further economically. Yeah. This is why the father, like, literally uh, for Schmuggle to, to be taking uh, out to public as, as an art up, as, as, as a company, and, and, and raise, raise money for that and fundings. This is a very good question, actually. The economical model, um, all, other, all search engines, alternative or not, DuckDuckGo or any other uh, uh, use um, ads. We will do this as well um, because we need to, of course, survive. But it will be very clearly, uh, clearly, uh, clearly marked. I also want to make a distinction again. Um, me and Carmel here are representing the desperately seeking community. How we look to develop further is exactly like we have done here at the Schmampus, by offering workshops, by doing the paired sessions that we offer online, by discussing further how you could recondition our search habits. Um, right now we are in some kind of a tandem partnership um, 
with Shmugo because it serves a certain purpose. But that's a different trajectory. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two more uh, questions. Thank you. The I think. Yeah, the green, um, yeah, green she was uh, patiently waiting. Thank you for the conversation talk. And I'm very sorry the other person left because I kind of wanted to like um, break down into her question of how she thought Google was so problematic and Shmugu is copying after that. But I think um, I think she kind of had to like break down her questions into why she thought Google was so problematic as to um, you guys keep mentioning the funding and I understand in the capitalism word um, whose funding actually takes the power over the search engine I'm pretty sure that's why it's very important and I just searched the power on Shmoogle because I've never used it I was very happy with the search results but I got this question um, how is the data filtered so um, with the data that I got on Shmoogle, it was very nice, but how did you like filter it or like what's your algorithms to filter good data and how would you like maintain like it's like a sub question to hers as well like the economic model behind it like the, how are you going to filter those advertising and yeah I'm actually very satisfied with the results that I got but I'm very interested on like how you do it very good questions actually um, that uh, it's good that uh, you, you raised them um, what we present is the first hundred results of the Bing search engine because their API is much more generous and less restrictive than the Google one the choice of the hundred first results is based on text nothing about user preferences only textual keywords we are not um, we, we, we do not presume to know what is best for you we have no algorithm we have a concept and our concept is that the human user can and should make their own choice you could make you should make your own choice you should decide you know like you go in a in a, uh, in a supermarket in a foreign country or you go to the library you scan the shelf of the books that, that you're interested in and then you you pick out what you think is most uh, relevant to what you're searching for because you want to have this choice and you want also to get a broad view of what else is there so no we do not assume to give you tailored results or what is best. We leave this to your intelligence. Um, we see your hand. Um, I just wanted to, it is actually too bad that goes the left because I felt that one thing was left in the air. Um, and that is what, what brought us together. I think as two initiatives, the thing that unites us is that we are trying to break conditioning Search engines, media in general, the internet as we know it today has conditioned us to use technology in a very particular manner. This does not necessarily serve its purpose. It does not necessarily give us the results that we thought that we would get. For instance, if I am a cisgender male and I'm looking for the love of my life, why do I start from Tinder or OkCupid? Why do I start from there when actually it is very clear that the app is conditioning me to do anything but achieve or find a qualitative find. It would just want me to swipe right, swipe right, swipe right ad infinitum to just stay logged. We are trying to break these conditioning patterns. Schmuggle is a great way to reshuffle the cards and make you wonder what are the biases of searching to make you associate in a way that you did not think that you would to kind of like turn it into something a bit more playful to basically use technology not in the way that it technology intended you to use it and this is also what we do in desperately seeking we try to rewire deconstruct and recondition our current conditions which are not working for us Um, so I want to know if you, if Shmugo, um processes users' dat data, and if so, how? No, not at all. Okay. And uh, privacy. Okay. And uh, another question is: um, 
when when you shift to um, venture capital and to being an entrepreneur, um, can you maybe mention if if there were any situations in which your critical edge was challenged or you had difficulties in keeping a critical edge on the project uh, in this situation in these I had I went uh, yeah I went through lots of insults actually um, uh, because at some point I kind of put on some sort of shield or armor and I went to talk to the most um, let's say and a, a prince, major players of, of the Israeli startup scene and said, okay, I have to do this and I have to challenge them and be challenged myself. And some were pretty aggressive. Um, but as time went by, I really saw the attitude change. Uh, I got more interest from VCs, actually, in meetings, which did not end up in funding, but they were like, yes, keep me posted. It's interesting. We understand there is a need for that. We understand that there's a market forming for that. Keep me posted. And there was this funding opportunity, but we were really not happy with the people. Um, and we said we, we prefer to go on our own way for the uh, time being because we we're pretty sure that as time goes by, we will find the right partners uh, uh, in funding for this uh, for this adventure and um, we always always make clear that this is the heart of the um, of the product we we will add things uh, we will give different uh, um, possibilities to work with it but at heart it remains um, something that breaks the, the the hierarchy that's something that that breaks the ranking and then offers al several alternatives to um, working with ranking. So, yeah, it is, it is not easy, but um, we're pretty optimistic about it because things are really picking up. Um, if, uh, are there any more questions? All right, so we take uh, one last question and then uh, we're gonna have to finish there. Other things afterwards. So, if I understood, you are actually using Google, but with another interface or with a tool in between the user? Um, I'm, using, I'm not using Google because I don't want them to shut me down. I'm using the, the uh, Bing search API, which is powered by Microsoft, so yes. And then we are, you are giving them data anyway, no? But no, we I'm are uh, sure. keeping, uh, uh, they do not get uh, the data of the users. We are not giving them that. Sorry, uh, very fast. Did you ever consider to have a different interface? Because one of the, um, um, how to say, well, the essence of these search engines is the um, one question only, or like a very clean interface and opaque and all that. Uh, yes, we're definitely considering that. We started off with a very regular interface because we wanted, we wanted to, uh, since the concept is really pretty, let's say, in a sense, radical, uh, we wanted the users to have an easy time to, uh, to, to work with it, um, intuitive um, interface to work with it. And we're definitely rethinking the interface, questioning our interface um, all the time, and we are starting to rethink the visual um, interface, yeah. It's, it's always a balance between um, uh, simplicity, let's say accessibility, and pushing the limits. Do we have time? A short one, then yes, but like oh, really yeah, try to connect yes. uh, with the um, many other panels which are talking about uh, climate change and awareness of the uh, resources. Um, have you? How do you embed this? Do you embed these thoughts into the programming of your algorithms? As far as I know, Bing, compared to Google in this case, uh, is very little transparent about the resources that they use and their carbon footprint. Uh, okay. um, yeah. This, this is the question. Again, uh, we are uh, using Bing in the most uh, straightforward way. Uh, Bing, we are taking the results Bing offers um, based on textual search. Um, and this is what we are shuffling. We have not implemented any other filtering system. No, no, I, I, I meant, okay. I meant uh, the, the criticism towards projects using Bing as a, for example, as a machine is that the when you make a query through your project, the, it goes through the Bing uh, servers, right? 
yeah. and then you reshuffle it. And the, in some, in some uh, other contexts, there is this thought of using also external APIs and servers uh, with services which provide transparency towards the mission and the power mix that they use in their uh, machines at the first place. You want, uh, okay, first, um, okay, um, indexing the web is a huge task. There are some independent indexes, not many, one of them is the CERCS uh, uh, search, uh, search engine, but most of the web is indexed by the giants and um, it, it, it would be, let's say, this is a discussion already, I already had here in the festival with, uh, with, the, with some people. Um, if, it were, if I were to wait until I would have my own independent index, um, it would be, this would not happen. This would be like a death thing. And this is not what I want. I want to start uh, devising, let's say, my own tools with the capabilities I have and grow from there. And if I have, to a certain extent, collaborate in a, in a way that is not harmful, then I will start from there and see how far this can take me. Hopefully, I can collaborate with other projects uh, on independent um, uh, indexes. But this, um, and of course, I would like to have my own uh, uh, cable infrastructure, but this is not realistic. And I don't want to kill the project. So I work right now with the tools I have in the best way I have. That hope it answered the question. Maybe a last comment that would wrap up the conversation, uh, tying in Sila's comment to your question, and maybe bringing in desperately seeking one last time to the discussion. I think Tzila voiced it very, very nicely in her talk that you supposedly are met with a binary choice. Either opt out, go offline, off Facebook, off anything, come up with this radical alternative somehow miraculously, reinvent the internet, with your uh, bare, bare hands, or just go to the woods. We personally believe that some middle ground must be met. I think this is what brings us together. You kind of need to learn to live side by side the monster in order to, I don't know, find your voice, find your agency. Opting out is a loss of agency, and we do not want that. We are missing... We're basically missing out by opting out. What we're trying to do here is not reinvent the internet technologically through the tech, but reinvent the ways in which we can approach the internet, subvert it in order to regain power. We are doing this in our group by making people think once again, what does it mean to search? Have we grown, used a very limited form of search. Schmoogle is basically taking your basic search engine, turning it on its head, and making you use it in a way that they did not intend, and using it in a constructive way, not just as, you know, not to create chaos. You can do a lot of things through Schmoogle. Um, this is what we're opting for. So yes, I understand, we understand, we agree that we should come up with better technology, but until then we need people to think better and wiser about technology so that the next child genius would come up with the tech that you envision. Uh, thank you, Gabby, and thank you, Tila. Uh, there are many more things to say, but uh, we're run out of time, so I would like to thank you everyone for coming, and um, yeah, come, come meet us at Desperately Seeking Online. Or just schmuggle.world. <laughs> Thank you.